like I'll start with uh, Shiri, we've not had an opportunity to chat to you in a while. Uh, congratulations on winning promotion, how does it feel? Sure. Good, yeah, good. Glad it's uh, all been confirmed, finalised, been a long wait, but, but yeah, brilliant to be set out to, to achieve promotion at the start of the season and, and we got there. Obviously, uh, this is the second year in a row for you both, but in, in extremely different circumstances. Firstly, what's your secret? Can't oh, tell, yeah. Can't tell <laughs> and secondly, <laughs> how how does it feel? I mean, I, I look back at your some of the promotion footage from, from when you drew at Tranmere, wasn't it? For Barry, yeah. And that seems so emotional. And, and then here today, it's an empty stadium. You can't help but feel mm. incredibly different. Though. Yeah, it, it is completely different. The circumstances have changed, haven't they? Um, you know, we enjoyed last season's uh, at Tramia in, in a slightly different way to how we've enjoyed this. This is, as I just said, we, we set out at the start of the season with a goal, which is why we were brought to the football club to try and get promoted. Um, we managed to achieve that. And yeah, it, it's, it hasn't been the same. We haven't been able to celebrate with our fa uh, family and the fans and whatever, which is what we would have liked to have done. But I'm sure at some point when everything gets back to normal, we'll, we'll celebrate. Right, and I'll maybe address this one to you, but uh, I mean, you talk about that, that system and, and, and the approach that you guys have, and obviously a lot of it's secret, so you can't tell <laughs> us, but um, a lot of it is built clearly on togetherness, and, and how, how tricky has it been when, when everybody, I mean, because we're talking about promotion, but we're also talking now about getting ready for next season, how tricky has it been to maintain that feeling of, of camaraderie within the coaching staff, the playing staff, and the club staff? Yeah, I think uh, as you say, first and foremost, you know the football we played was exceptional. I think, uh, and that goes without saying. I know Crew Alexander and, and Swindon Town played good football as well, along with ourselves, and hence the top three went up. But in terms of togetherness and camaraderie, yeah, that's what we build it on. You know, we make sure we have good lads. We don't sign any players who we feel going to let us down. Any players who's going to give us any bother. You know, we've had that. I think. You know, with the staff, we've had Zoom meetings every Wednesday for the past three and a half months. We just only stopped it last week, really, when we knew. Because we were we drinking was, too much. Yeah, every Wednesday <laughs> we'd have a drink and a chat, and it, it, listen, it was great. And then the camaraderie with the boys, you know, she was obviously on the group chat with all the lads, and you know they're still together. And it's even the lads who, who, who've moved on are still on the group chats now. And look, we, you know, we want to try and celebrate as quick as we possibly can because, as you said, we've got we've got another season to go next season, but. I think you know from me, Shuey, the lads and all that who come down with us, what we've achieved is, is something special to get this football club back into into League One at the first attempt. Yeah, it was we set out to do that. But you don't just do it on your own, you know, we've had the staff behind us in terms of the board of directors, Simon, Andrew, uh, and Zach and, and obviously Neil. So, you know, we, we have to thank everyone associated with the football club to get us where we got to because, you know, yeah, we set out to the sessions on and everything else and plan and how we're going to win and the players going to deliver but with the backing of everyone else associated it's just as important. You've had uh, relatively short, you're early in your coaching managerial careers but you've had a, a, a lot to deal with in that don't time. Do, don't do easy summers do we <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was just no. going to ask you, you know, with, with, with everything that you had to deal with at Berry and then, and then relocating that to Plymouth and, and turning us around so quickly to win promotion and then having to deal with the global pandemic, I mean, you, you've not had much time to sit back and reflect, have you? No, as he's just said, it's it's never straightforward. Uh, next year, our open's going to be easy, <laughs> which, <laughs> Don't say which that. obviously <laughs> it won't be, but it's one of them. It's, and we're, um, as you say, we're young in our management and coaching career. We're only relatively inexperienced, but we've seen a lot. So that can only stand us in good stead for the, in the future. You know, we've. We've had to deal with things over the last two or three years that some managers and coaches would not have had to deal with in ten years. So it's only it's only be good for our experience. Why well, he's gone a lot greater than me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's quite stressful. I'd say. Yeah. That, knowing you both the way that I do, I, I suspect that even if you had a, a quiet week, you'd be using it on preparations. If I'm not wrong, uh, how how are your views on? on how the squad is shaping up for next season? Yeah, listen, we, we, we're always working, we're working non-stop, 24 hours, well, we're not really, but we, we are working all the time. <laughs> well, I am, and, yeah, no, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, and Neil, all of us, you know, John now setting the programmes out, Jimmy analysing games, and, you know, everything we're, everything we're trying to do, we're trying to do to get better. We don't just, you know, don't just turn up and rock up and throw sessions on, we have to plan it, we have to do it, you know, we're planning now for next season, how do we go one better? And that's not saying we're going to go and get promoted, that's just saying how we, the sessions need to change a little bit, so a bit more intense, we have to learn on stuff, what we, we weren't quite good at last season, so although we've got promoted, it, you know, time doesn't, 
we don't just stand still and say, oh, well, we've done it, we just go into the next league. We've got a plan for the next league, so we'll be watching games, analysing, obviously, the League One playoffs at, at, at this week, we'll be watching that, we'll be analysing that. Uh, we've watched a lot of League One games last season, we've had scouts out watching, so we're, we're planning all the time. Uh, and you need to, because you can't just roll up and think that you can just do it. It's got to be worked on, and that's certainly what we've done, as Shuey's just said, but... You know, that's all of us. We, we, we need to make sure we're, we're on point because you can't go into League One half-hearted. You've got to go into League One. First and foremost, you've got to get a good squad. The squad's OK what we've got now, but we want to add competition for places. We want to add, not, not saying we want to add better players because they're all as good as each other, but we need to add competition for places, and that's what we'll certainly do. Obviously, the, the timeline um, for a standard season has been completely thrown up in the air. How difficult is it for you to simply recruit a player when you don't know when the season's going to start? Yeah. Yeah. Listen, it's hard, isn't it? We, we've, yeah. we, we've been trying to speak to you know we me, me and Shuey. Shuey's learning now to speak with some agents who, <laughs> who sort of try and buy and sell you. But again, we, we speak to players all the time. Don't when I say players, speak to the agents. I know now we can start speaking to players because they're out of contracts, and we'll continue to do that. Uh, but look, ultimately they've got to be the right fit, and you know we, we have a. a, a plan in place already, a recruitment policy, recruitment, what we've worked on all season really since probably December, January time and then players are still there, they're still on the radar, yet we've lost one or two who we felt we could have we could have got but they've moved on to probably different clubs and whatnot and needed money and needed contracts, that's fine but for us now we've just got to make sure we recruit, keep analysing, keep seeing what players come available and then if they're good enough for us then we'll, we'll, we'll try and do something with them. And I guess my final question would be maybe for you, Shira, as I've spoken to Ryan about this before, but perhaps you have a message for the supporters who can't be here with us to celebrate today. They've, they've kind of really taken you by to heart this season. Yeah, they have. We can only, only thank them. You know, the way uh, they've welcomed us since we've come down to the club is unbelievable. Um, I'm living in the city, love, love being here, um, love being part of this club. It's unfortunate that the fans, as I've just said, couldn't celebrate. This promotion with us, I know the majority of them will have celebrated on their own terms in their own time. But um, but yeah, I, I hope that they were proud of the team this season. That was our aim to, that was our mission. In fact, you know, to excite the Green Army and reinvigorate them, and we felt that we did that. Um, and then obviously the promotion just tops it off. So next year, all we can promise them is that we'll do the same. I'm not going to say we're going to have the same success, <laughs> but we'll try to to excite them. We'll try and um, play the right way and give them a football team that they'll be proud of. Well, thank you both and congratulations. Thank Cheers. you. Thanks, Ron.